Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Cancer. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Cancer, I'm doing your reading with my three decks blended into one. So you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. Okay, so you've got the unmarked trail. The card that dropped was the Eight of Fire or the Eight of Wands. The unmarked trail on the split and the Two of Fire at the bottom of the deck. Okay, and with this Eight of Wands that wants to kind of be in the middle. Um, okay, according to what's already on the table here, these three cards are telling me that you're having a hard time communicating something to somebody. You're kind of this Two of Wands here who is maybe on the verge of a new phase, a new direction. And it's like, like I kind of want to go like this and say that you're attempting to communicate this to somebody, but it's this unmarked trail revelations um, where they're either not understanding it or um, it's like you've seen something that they haven't seen and you're having a difficult time communicating it. You've, you've seen something they haven't seen that maybe is kind of um, pushing you to make a new decision, to do something new, to go somewhere new but they're not understanding is kind of what it feels like. Because this card, the unmarked trail, it's like it's blocked from their view, right? It's like there's this scroll or document in the background that perhaps you've already been there and read what was on that scroll or experienced whatever is beyond this pillar, but they haven't. It's kind of what it feels like. Okay, um, overall energy from the Lifruma Healing Oracle for Cancer. Upside down, I knew that was gonna happen. So the cards are all a mess. The Lifruma and me have a very complicated relationship for some reason. Okay, solstice rarefied. The fact that we just had the winter solstice is incredible that the solstice card is coming up. Okay, so this solstice energy here is talking about, it could be that it's impacting you more than the people around you, or at least you're more aware of how this energy is moving you or moving through you, moving through your experience and perhaps their experience, where it may be actually, well, this is interesting, it may be actually really enlivening you. For some reason, it's having an, the impact on you that it's really kind of this life force energy that you're tapping into, but the person or somebody that you're dealing with seems to be almost having the exact opposite experience where they're, they're actually quite depleted. I mean, you've got this almost like this is the life card for you and they have, I want to say the death card. So while you're waxing, they're waning. Okay. So because we're starting with the, um, the empty well time, time to replenish. It brings with it, it's kind of got this um, Six of Cups energy about it because of the fact that there's all this storytelling element in this card that I often see. Because to me, it looks like a big stack of books or papers, right? So it has all this story and narrative, the, but it's also coming through today with its uh, meaning of, of empty, of needing replenishment. So there's something here about after so much time, after so many stories, after so many memories, the relationship perhaps or this individual is very depleted needing replenishment and that's where you're coming in here with this four of earth this is the ultimate support character my ultimate support character which is you today it's interesting because it usually comes into the reading as somebody supporting the one i'm reading for but today cancer it's coming in that this is you with the connectivity card coming next to it it's talking about wanting to lift up elevate or revive this connection or this individual is it the connection or the individual that is waning because the death card is coming out next if you can see here um there's this fox or this other creature here on the side and this 
this uh, spirit on the side here is trying to, well, usher them through the death process. But okay, what is, how it was coming through to me was actually kind of like a car battery that's needing to be boosted. Maybe because of these two cards here, it's got this like real electrical aspect to it where it's like you're trying to boost or energize energetically, electronically, trying to give somebody or, or a situation or a relationship a boost but it's kind of, it's like it's on its last legs. It's unable to be boosted at this point is what it feels like. Kind of like there's this feeling maybe that it's too far gone, that they're too far gone, but it's showing me that this isn't kind of like your last hope. What am I trying to say here? It's like th this may be all, what, the assistance that you might provide by kind of being in the room with them is not really beneficial to them at this point. It's basically like you have to walk away from this connection, from this relationship. And you would prefer that they come with you, but they're staying with the Queen of Earth coming next. It's got a little bit of an energy maybe of like turning your back turning your back on them, maybe when they're in their weakest or their most difficult moment, but it's not completely that. It's okay, it's something like this. With the sky bridge coming up next, um, it's like you are going to the energy source. In fact, the source card is coming out right below that. It's like you have a source of energy, a source of replenishment, and it's almost as if you're going to that place to pick up more energy or to pick up more information perhaps and maybe it's tying into this here where I was saying it's like you have access to this whatever this white energy is in the background but the path is blocked to them and it could just be because they're so depleted I mean maybe they're actually physically unwell and unable to travel for example and so you are moving ahead without them and traveling to somewhere but it's like but you come back right so there's this feeling of maybe turning your back this card is also them too though it's coming through as they're embedded in their position like they cannot uproot for whatever reason like I said because they're depleted maybe just because they're overwhelmed maybe they just have too too busy of a life too much responsibility and so and it's and it could be that's what's depleting them right and it's like they really need something to change for them because it's not working at this point at all it's like it's becoming critical and there's not much that you can do beyond kind of walk away and go recharge yourself and then come back renewed with this messenger of earth it's as if you're bringing back a message or you're bringing back energy for them. I've kind of got this like car battery thing and that keeps coming up for some reason. And so it's like you're trying to give them the energy that you're picking up elsewhere. You're trying to elevate them with that with the ace of air or sorry the ace of water coming next i don't know if you can see there's this giant hand kind of scooping this one up it's coming out right below the support character so you are attempting to give them emotional and spiritual support with the benefactor coming up next grace and generosity that's all your energy you've got all this grace about you with this Five of air coming next. This is my grace card and the cosmic womb. It's like you're surrounded by all of this gorgeous, almost like source or God or universal energy that for some reason, it's almost like it's not, it's not quite as present with you here. It's almost as if you come into this situation, realize that somebody that you're connected to is really struggling and needs something. And so then you go off to the source to pick that up and bring it back to them. And so when you come back, you are elevated. You have all of this grace and gener like a lot to give. You have a lot to give, a lot to offer because it's almost like you've um, extra charged. You know what I mean? This, this card here is kind of like, this is you on a regular day. You have a lot to offer. You are helpful. You're, you are a very supportive character but for this particular situation, because it's a milestone, it's a major transition point, it's a major transformation point, it's like it needs more than usual. Do you see what I mean? So your usual kind of healing, um, 
energy work that you do, advice, counsel, whatever it is that you generally have on offer just by being yourself is attempted. It's like it's given. It's you, you try to boost them. I mean, it could almost even be like Reiki, right? With the hand on there, like doing a Reiki session. And it's not changing their situation or their heart or their energy or their mind. It's not having the impact on them that you hoped. And so you go off and pick up something extraordinary. Do you see what I mean? And I don't know why this is suddenly jumping out. This is interesting. Because of this light source at the bottom of the well and the bridge there, the light source, like that's where you're going. There's something here about going. It's almost as if you have to pass through all of the stories. Like that may be your shared stories, your shared history, or maybe it's something about like while you're off picking up like whatever medicine it is that you need or you're recharging or whatever it is that you're doing that is away from them that is intended to bring back a charge or upliftment it's a, it's almost as if you have to walk through the past or you could just be that you're thinking about it right if you have to travel somewhere or you're taking some time to go do this to gather this up it's like you're they're all of the story. It's like you're going through all of your best memories with them. You're thinking of you're you're replaying the past, replaying this relationship. It's very heavily in your heart and mind. The interesting thing is though, there's not. I don't feel like a major concern coming from you. So it's not like that somebody's actually on their deathbed. Is not what it feels like to me. It feels more transformational. That's kind of a metaphor. You see what I mean? death as in death and rebirth and transformation and so they could just be going through like a dark night of the soul like really struggling right now um because i'm not feeling a lot of like really heavy-hearted concern for you but they're definitely it's like this is a priority for you they are all of the like i said this feels like a six of cups which is really strange that it's never come through that way before but it feels like that like there, there's a long history or very valued kind of shared past together that is on your mind as you're as you're going through this it's like as if you're traveling somewhere and it's like almost like having to take a road trip or something and the whole time you're traveling it's like you're moving through this space of all of the stories you see what I mean it's almost like having to go back in the past but it's not that it's like you're going back in the past on this journey or during this preparation, right? It's like if you have to step away and go prepare something. But then when you come back with the messenger of earth, it feels like this. It's almost like a hero's journey type of thing where you've gone off somewhere and you're coming back with something to share with them. Because this is a, this is a guide energy. It has something to do with, it's kind of like this that I was talking about with all of this kind of information from the precipice in a sense, from beyond from beyond their room, beyond their experience, you're going outside of that and coming back with message or or energy for them, upliftment for them. I wanna say that there is, especially because this came out on the split, there's a lot of information and or kind of like storytelling. I almost wonder if you're coming back with new context about all of these stories, which is really interesting. And that may, new context about the stories, new context, a new perspective maybe about the past. Because it's almost as if, like I said, it's not going back into, into the past, but it's almost as if you're walking through your past, your shared past. And then when you come back, it's like you have a different version of it. That's interesting to communicate with them. This, this revelation is like something's been revealed to you. Okay, but okay. There's something about there's storytelling or information to share, but all of these cards here are saying to me that more than anything, it's your beingness. It's you being in the space with them that will hopefully impact them or help to get them over this threshold point because you're coming in with, it's almost like the energy of source lifting you actually carrying you guiding you in order for you to share it with them 
It's like you're coming in with an overabundance, an overcharge. You've been overcharged so that when you come into the space with them, it will, it will um, bleed through into their experience in a sense. So I'm wondering actually if, because of all this kind of idea of storytelling and the fact that they're not able to understand you or they're not, they're not understanding you. I mean, maybe, maybe if we're talking about somebody who's unwell, they could be unconscious, but they, they could be unconscious also in the sense of just not being as awake or aware as you are. So they may not be able to understand your words necessarily. But I want to say that the what the cards are saying is that you're just being in the room with them is beneficial, even if they don't understand you. So it's kind of like, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged if there's not immediate kind of um, reciprocity or acknowledgement about what it is that you're bringing to them. Because I feel like they kind of can't hear you or they can't understand you. Or what's interesting with the six of air coming up next and the nine of fire, it almost looks like you might have to do this several times. It's really interesting, especially with this card here. This is fascinating how this is coming through. See with the hand there and there's kind of like water dripping. It's almost, it's almost becoming like this obstacle course where you have to run off into a distance or to another room or beyond where it where they're capable of traveling to because they seem to be anchored down or really embedded somehow so they can't leave their location at least kind of symbolically metaphorically they're stuck where they are and so it's like you're having to go off somewhere and charge up or pick up something and run back to them but it's almost as if you're trying to carry water in your cupped hands right so by the time you get to them it's not that it's depleted at all because it's like because you're overfilled but it does with these cards here at the end it almost looks as if you have to do this like multiple times right with the six of air and the nine of it's see so she's kind of going off and then she's coming back with more light it's like this repeating pattern that you have to do where you have to go out and come back go out and come back but it's interesting though because this nine of fire talks to me about dream work actually it's kind of this idea of picking stuff up in your dreams I mean, maybe you're doing something like that where you're going off into other dimensions or into dream space or maybe even like on shamanic journeys in order to kind of pick up something for them. You know, this idea of like um, that a shaman, but this is what, the way it used to be before ayahuasca started becoming much more popular is that you would go to the shaman with your issues with your concerns, with your illness, and they would take the medicine and journey on your behalf and come out of that journey with answers for you. I mean, now more people are doing it for themselves, doing the medicine for themselves, but it's something like that. It's almost like you're going off and doing the medicine or having some sort of, um, uh, what's that called? Like a spirit journey, or maybe just quite literally going somewhere and coming back with like nourishment for them and you have to do it repeatedly, but it could be the reason why this nine of fire, the nine of fire talks to me about um, something that's difficult to translate actually, which is interesting. Something that's difficult to translate because, because it's multidimensional, because you're crossing dimensions or levels of consciousness in order to access it. So when you bring it back, I mean, this could even be yourself. Like I was saying, it's like having a, a handful of water and trying to run somewhere with it by the time you get there you still have some of the water but not as much as you started with it could be something like that where it's like you're going off on some kind of a journey or vision quest that was what i was looking for a vision quest type of a thing but when you when you come back into the room with them it's almost as if you're having a hard time completely remembering or accurately describing the information that you received it's difficult to pull things from one level of awareness into another like trying to remember a dream and if there's time passing between between like if there's time passing you know if you're not seeing them every day or in close proximity to when you touched this source it could be really faded by the time you get to them so fascinating so the issue is 
it's inter it's almost like you have direct access to life force energy and for some reason they don't because they're anchored to this which is extremely depleting to them so it's it's like like i said it's almost as if you're running off somewhere and charging like a battery and but then by the time you get back to them the battery isn't fully charged again it has some charge so there's this interesting back and forth right so okay i think i'm going to leave it there Yeah, that's the fascinating thing. It's like you are going to the source. You're going to the source of something and they don't have access to that for some reason. And it's interesting how it's almost tied to solstice somehow. Somehow it's like this only became, it could just be a timing issue. And the fact that this only became really apparent for you, for the two of you. Okay, it's something like this. Something is happening either energetically or maybe very literally in your lives. If this is somebody who's who you're very intimate with, something is happening in your lives that is having the almost exact opposite impact on each of you. It's like where it's giving you more energy or more upliftment or more clarity. For some reason, they're not handling it so well. And this has only become apparent really recently is what it looks like to me. That's why the solstice energy is here. It's like maybe even this week, maybe even starting yesterday, suddenly there's almost this falling away or this separation between your energies where you may have been really kind of united or very on the same page before. You see what I mean? So something, some sort of an event or occurrence in your life or an energy moving through your reality has made this apparent that there's now kind of a gap between you and you are benefiting. It's almost as if you have an overabundance now of energy or clarity and they're on the opposite end of the spectrum. And so you're doing everything you can to kind of bring it to them because it's like you, because you're accessing the source, whatever that means. Okay, I'm gonna pull cards, create an extended. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. If not, I will see you next time, Cancer. Thanks, bye.